Morning, Charlie. Good morning. It's amazing to be here. And actually, slightly surreal Come because on. pretty well most mornings I get my energy and a spring in my step yes. from listening to you three. Yes. So to be sitting in here with yes. you is kind of bonkers. I might just instantaneously yeah. combust. Thank you. He's a confirmed convert, mm. is what he's. You also gave us a plug in the paper, didn't you? Yes, I did. Thank I you. Did. In the Telegraph, yes, nonetheless. Yes, I know. Shocking. Excellent. Thank Who you are so they? much. <laughs> All right, well, it's time to return the favour. Sammy and the Extra Hot Chilli Powder by Charlie P. Brooks, illustrated by Steve May. It's a great book. Sammy is the rescue dog, the sort of semi-posh rescue dog. Harry is the first owner of Sammy. And then we get on to Beanie, then we get to Beanie's mum. Um, who is Harry? How did Sammy come about? And what do they get up to, Charlie? So, um... I was thinking of an idea for a book, and, and we have a friend who can talk to animals via telepathy. Mm -hmm. And I thought that would be a great children's book to 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 write a book through the through the voice of a, of a dog. And we've got the most fabulous dog at home that sleeps on our bed and does all the things a dog's not meant to do. And I thought, well, combine the two uh, and and turn her into a border sniffer patrol dog, and you could have a bit of fun. So. Mum um, hails from Primrose Hill. Sammy's mum hails from Primrose Hill. Yeah, doggy mum. Yeah, and doggy mum. And Sammy's doggy mum, uh, with the way Sammy came about and her two sisters, uh, was that um, Sammy's mum went for a little walk, absent without leave, around the sort of Regent's Park area, met a dog, not so highfalutin, a man, a, a, a man yeah, dog. Yeah, a pretty rough set of poo. Yeah, well, sorry, some, pretty, pretty rough Irish set of. Yeah, and then something happened. Well, you know, what yeah, happened happened. They, they and, had puppies. Yeah, she woke up with these puppies. And yeah. they and they had to get rid of the evidence as soon as possible. So what, what happened to the litter? So Harry, who's a sort of ex-soldier, um, probably Afghanistan, yeah. um, has always worked with dogs, decided he wanted to go for a slightly unusual dog to, to train up as a sniffer dog. So basically takes over Sammy yeah. and, and trains her and you go through all the training, which is fun. And you get into how dogs are basically like the opposite to humans. So when humans think something's a really disgusting smell, <laughs> dogs think it's fabulous. Yeah, so do kids. I and mean, that's why kids are well, going to exactly. love the book. And, and dogs do certain things. So when dogs say hello, they sniff your bottom. Yeah. Um, they don't <laughs> shake hands and peck you on the cheek and say, oh, nice to see you, when they really don't mean it. They just have a good old sniff and they know who you and are. And five-year-old twin, human twins also smell you at bottom because they think it's funny to act like a dog. <laughs> that's what happens when you come to our house. Um, and so Sammy didn't know that she was being trained for airport security. She thought she was just had one of the greatest owners imaginable. Exactly. She she thought she was just playing. And and as a result of writing this book, I did quite a lot of research on sniffer dogs. And that is basically how they train sniffer dogs. It's it's a game. And every time they get it right, they get a biscuit. So they get it right again. And then they, they learn to smell out either cash or explosives or whatever they're trained to, to smell. They're also incredible medical dogs that can smell cancer. Yeah. So an incredibly quick and cheap way to detect cancer is just train a dog and they'll tell you straight away. So we had a lady on the show who can also smell cancer and she's working and she smelt the cancer in her husband and she diagnosed it and she now works with Royal College of um, in the Medical Royal College and she's been able to, she's been proven to be able to smell Parkinson's and other diseases and other humans have an amazing sense of smell but I wonder how close are human with the best sense of smell is to the dog with the worst sense of smell and I bet they're still miles apart miles apart the dog will be way better yeah and of course, if you spent tens of millions of pounds inventing a machine that could smell as well as a dog, everyone would go, yes, we must have those machines. But because it's a dog, people automatically think, well, that's not medicine, that's not science. Yeah. But of course it is. It's really advanced biology. Well, I remember at LAX Airport a couple of summers ago, and they'd replaced all the machines, all the AI with sniffer dogs, and you didn't have to take any of your laptops or your screens out of your bags because the sniffer dogs, dogs had it sorted. And I said, this is amazing, so much quicker and apparently like a million times more more reliable. Absolutely. We should be training out more sniffer dogs. And then the next time we have a pandemic, you know, we can just all walk past dogs instead of spending a fortune on tests. Yeah, yeah. Just get the dog to do Billions and billions yeah. and billions of pounds. Uh, so we fall in love with Sammy. Sammy falls in love with Harry and then um, reluctantly gets taken to Heathrow Airport because she didn't know she was being secretly trained to be a security dog. And then there are all these different smells for different things. And in the first few weeks, because she's a mongrel and she says, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sort of super duper highfalutin hybrid. And the other dogs go, no, you're a mongrel and we want nothing to do with you. Yeah, you're not joining our gang. Yeah. But she, she just happens to have an amazing nose. And, and, and they, you know, in children's books, they should 
could be some good messages for children. Yeah. And I, I hope the message that comes out of that is don't exclude other children from your group. Yeah. It's, it's mean. It's don't not judge nice. A book by its cover. Well, exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, and so Sammy has to sort of push through being slightly excluded from a group. Uh, so I hope when children read this, they'll think, oh, yeah, that wasn't a very nice thing to do. And they are trained, these sniff dogs are trained to smell different things because things have smells. Money has a certain smell. There are dogs um, who are taught to smell money. And one dog can be taught to smell many different things. And this is all true. Absolutely. If you If you go on... YouTube, you see all sorts of videos of dogs that can sniff certain things. Right. So, um, so money, money, drugs. explosives, drugs, uh, probably food. You can't just bring animals and food in, yeah. you know, because that's dangerous because you bring in disease. Frogs. Frogs, exactly. <laughs> Frogs you've make read, it. You've read the Frogs book, make it into somebody's undercrackers, let me tell you. <laughs> Gold. Gold, absolutely. Gold smells of cheddar, according to Sammy. Now, you do actually break down what certain things smell of, and I thought, oh, this is clever. How do we know that the diamond smell of cheese or whatever um, without being able to talk to a dog? And I think I thought, how good is Charlie's friend who can communicate with animals via telepathy? But you just made all that stuff up. I did, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm I just... so sad because I'd read it all and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Like explosives smell very bitter and watches smell of gold, but then cash smells of mint. I was going, oh, we must have done loads of research. This is so interesting. We've just told <laughs> well, me it's Of course, they must smell of something, but we just don't know what they exactly. are. Exactly. So you can't really say it's wrong, can you? Because no. we don't know. But the way we teach um, dogs is, so, so money, we know money smells of something that dogs recognise because if we give dogs money to smell, the kind of same kind of money we're trying to get them to detect, they will detect it, but they just can't tell us what it smells of. Exactly. And what they're actually smelling with money <laughs> is great. the ink. Oh, it's okay. the ink on right. the on the banknotes that they smell. Okay, so so um, Sammy does uh, amazingly well, um, much to the chagrin of these other dogs that aren't hybrids uh, and have been in the security forces for years. And you sort of think that someone would talk a bit like that because you personify them so well. Um, and then something happens with some chili powder, and she has to be semi-retired. Yes, exactly. So how far do you want to go with what we talk about in the story? I think this is okay. We're not. We're not, no spoiler alert here. Oh, okay. She she has to retire to Bloomington, yeah. which is a thinly de, um, disguised disguised village <laughs> where, where you live, quite close <laughs> where I live. Stick with what you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, where she meets Robin, who's her new dog best friend, right. and Beanie, who's her new human best friend. Mm. Um, and then they get up to stuff. But then she has to be drafted back in uh, for a big diamond heist. And I think that's where we sort of pause the All story. All right, via a surprise helicopter visit around the village. Because she's so in demand, it's so urgent. They have to send exactly. out a government they, helicopter yep, for her. They suddenly realise, so call for Sammy, call for Sammy. <laughs> this is Paw Patrol 3.0. <laughs> yeah, next level. Oh, my goodness. Um, now, Be So Beanie and her mum, and that, they're, are they... Are they? Do they have a relationship with security forces and they will foster dogs if something happens to them? Then? No, but, uh, Mrs. Brown, being his mum, was uh, a friend of Harry's. Right. And Harry's been told, you can't keep Sammy. You've got a job to do. You're too busy. Yeah. She'll have to go to Sammy's some sense home. Sense smell is out of order, temporarily yeah, out yeah. of order. Sammy's smell is completely down. Right. So Harry goes, no way am I just letting anyone have Sammy. So he says to Mrs. Brown, you will just look after Sammy for a couple of days won't you which yeah. of course turns into ever and then harry ends up coming to stay as well yeah it's all cool and, and then you get the different characters in the village and there's this the odd sort of um uh no it's not not exactly crimes but she sammy can't help herself and that's how she realized she's getting her smell back exactly and and the, so the characters in the village are are the sort of characters you get in every village in England. You know, there's a particularly slight... Particularly yours. <laughs> particularly ours. Um, one of my favourite characters oh, is, is Farmer Gerald, right. who I may have borrowed from Clarkson's Farm. Yeah. Uh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Names may have been changed. All these characters are fictitious, or are they? Completely, da, da, da. <laughs> completely. Oh, marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. Um, you, you, uh, you love your dogs, Fasos. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you just recently lost your one of your doggies, didn't lost you? Lost our Holly. We still have our Bella, who joins us at running club, um, and our Mary. Do you, want, do you want Mary's review now? Because our Mary, who's nine years old, she reviews the books on this show. Oh, she careful. does love not it. pull her punches, our Mary. Careful. She won't do it now. Uh, if I don't pay her the two pounds, which I think is a little unfair because she does get loads of free books to read. <laughs> but, you know, I started and so on, I have to continue. And um, here's the thing, Charlie. I'm yeah. nervous. She does it like it is. You should be nervous. You know how Clarkson can kill off a car? Absolutely. In a paragraph. 
Mary's the same. This, my career could be about to All end right, now. Nah, Mary could be finishing yeah. my career. We'll give you the choice. We don't have to play it. To yes, you. no, play it. Go on. Okay, he's going for it. And here's Mary with her review of Sammy and the Extra Hot Chili Powder. Sammy and the Extra Hot Chili Powder is really funny and really sweet and really exciting. I love Sammy. He makes me smile. Also, I've always wanted to read a book told by a dog. And I thought I was going to have to write one. So I'm pleased, because I am very busy. Happy with that? <laughs> oh, that's lovely. I love the fact it's first-person dog. Well, it's fun, isn't it? It's and it's great, fun, man. It? It's fun sort of thinking, how would a dog write? How would a dog think? And, of course, dogs are smarter than humans in so many ways. Not us. Um, <laughs> well, not well, our Labrador. But Vassals, no, that's if, their ultimate trick, though, isn't it? Yeah, Vassal, if you need a new dog, I know this week there are six dogs coming back from Somalia that have been sniffing mines out there. Is that a fact? And they're going to be retired. And, of course, they need homes. It's what really, kind of dogs are they? I think they're Malinos, Malinois, Malinois. Oh, we would love another dog. Oh, I mean, these dogs are incredible, Chris. And, of course, they need homes because you know, their career comes to an end. Normally, their handlers will, will give them a home, but that's not always possible. Same with police um, dogs, isn't and, it? And so, yeah, exactly. And they, you know, a lot of them will make fantastic dogs pets. Dogs are great, aren't they? And they're oh, so they're dogs smart. Dogs are great. Cats, anyone? Nope, still not cats. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. They're, they're not smart. Cats? No, no I, dogs. By, by the way, I keep it wrong dogs on are dogs. Are dogs have gotten over on you because y- your dog is compl- is obviously playing dumb for your benefit to make you feel a okay, bit Okay, here's, here's just a very, very quick story, yes. right? She sees a squirrel in the garden, right? We have these three big wooden glass doors between says, us and the garden. Squirrel! So she she pelts towards the squirrel, right? Yeah. But she forgets that there's glass, right? And so it hits her head, like a, like a cartoon, right? Three minutes later, yep. another squirrel in the garden, exactly, <laughs> exactly the same thing into the That's glass. That's a goldfish you've got there. <laughs> That's a goldfish in a massive bowl without water. Yes. The bowl's your house. The goldfish looks a bit like a Labrador. Yep. And you've been had over by the pet shop owner. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I'm right in saying in, in the You've house. been sold the pop. You've been sold the goldfish. <laughs> I think I might say in a house, cats will always sit where there's negative energy and dogs will always sit See? where there's positive energy. Oh, nice. And isn't it true that if you... That may be wrong. I mean, I don't think I made it up. I, isn't it true that unfortunately, if you unfortunately pass and you're not noticed, your cat will start to eat you, yeah, well, whereas your yeah. dog will try and go and raise the alarm? No, your dog right? will... You know, if you're in an <laughs> apartment and, and you pass away sadly and it's just you and the dog, the dog will just sit down next to you and very sadly pass away as well uh, from starvation the whereas end, uh, the, the cat in the same situation will eat you yeah <laughs> you know there are diabetes dogs that that live with people with type 1 diabetes and they will wake them up in the middle of the night and say your blood levels are dropping you need to Come do something on. wow can we just and, hear it for dogs please you know. uh, control a round of applause for all dogs <laughs> Right, and if you don't mind, our first ever control room tumbleweed for cats. I love cats. <laughs> Said one person. <laughs> <laughs> um, if, if cats Charlie, could... this is great, man. Uh, when did you come up with the idea? How did you come up with the idea for Sammy and the extra hot chili powder? Inspired by our dog, our lovely setter yeah. poo, uh, and, and your our, mate, and our friend who can do telepathy with animals. Okay, and what, when did the idea of a security, a national security dog, come, or homeland security dog, come into your? I can't purview? remember, Chris. I think you know these things sometimes just develop as yeah, you go yeah. along. You start with the nugget of an idea. Yeah. And then you get up at four in the morning and drink four cups of coffee. And off you go. And go, where should we Isn't go? Great. And just go mad and just go more and more mad. And then hopefully your editor takes, you know, most of it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you get left with something that's sort of viable. Yeah. Uh, somebody's got to get the laundry dirty. Somebody's got to do the ironing. It's as simple as that. And it all works out in the end. Your last book, uh, Trilogy, did unbelievably well. Are we? Is this the first of three again? Are we going it, for... It is the first of three. Yeah, I've actually already written the second one. That's what happened the first time around. It's exactly. Isn't it? Exactly, I know. Are you loving it? Uh, I do love it. I mean, I really do love it. I, I think my mental age is getting younger. I, I, I think if I was a time machine, my time machine broke when I was seven years old. Um, Because that's sort of uh, where my mental age is. And I think Sammy is for slightly younger readers than Holly 
Holly, the Holly series yeah. was. So I've sort of gone the wrong way, if you know what I mean. I, well, I thought it was but, great. I thought it was great, um, regardless of, of age. And I don't think you're going back in time. I think you've just dropped the notion that we all get to that point in our lives that there is such a thing as a grown-up. And you go, I, there aren't any grown-ups. Mm. <laughs> exactly. They just aren't. It's just the phase you go through when you think you're grown-up. And I mean, isn't a good book a good book? Does it really matter whether it's written for seven-year-olds or, or, or for 70-year-olds? I mean... Hopes and dreams for the book. Hopes and dreams for Sammy going forward. Uh, I would love it to be like a TV show or a series or something like that. All right. uh, I'd love to see it. So come alive 3D. And as a racing man, as a horse racing man, have you heard the brand new Talk Sport trail for Cheltenham? I have. I've just been sitting in <laughs> Alan Brazil's studio with him and he looked a little bit shocked when it was first played to him. Right. <laughs> it's good though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, are you going to Cheltenham? I gotta go two days probably. Right. Got netball netball match on Wednesday. I can't miss that. I didn't I, know you played netball. No, I don't. I'm <laughs> going to watch my daughter. I've turned into King Richard, apparently. We were talking about netball um last night. About the fact that so we were talking about uh, have you heard of Danish long ball? No. No, it's, it's a new big thing at Noah's school. Danish, they're playing Danish long ball. He tried to explain it last night. Um, it's all to do, with, you, you can't move when you get the ball. And Tasha said, oh, that's a bit like netball. And I said, yeah, you, she, and then Tasha reminded me, you can't move when you play netball, but you can go from the landing foot to the takeoff foot. That's right. And that's why often in, in um, netball, the, they look like ballerinas handing the ball to someone else because you can lean, can't you, on one yeah, foot? Yeah, you cannot lift your landing foot. You cannot lift your you landing foot. Pivot. Is that right? It, but you can't lift your landing foot. You so you land. Yeah, and then you've got like three taps. I didn't know that. It's great, isn't it? Um, so Cheltenham this year doesn't fall on St. Patrick's Day. That's on the Sunday, and Cheltenham finished on the Friday the 15th. Um, obviously, that's happened before. I can't remember when. Do they always go before Paddy's Day, or do sometimes they go after Paddy's Day? I think they just go roughly the second week in March. And it doesn't matter. And it's, it's whatever it is. <laughs> and you're already wearing green in preparation. Yes. Charlie, thanks for coming on the show. Chris, thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's a great it's, book. It's great to be here with it's you. It's out you. today, and thanks for listening to the show, and thanks for giving us a plug in the, in the Telegraph. Sammy and the Extra Hot Chili Powder, Charlie P. Brooks, is out now. It's a brand new trilogy and it begins with this one illustrated by Steve May uh, fill your boots it's cracking <laughs>